This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 12 4 2020. This is show number 170. Well, uh, we get the uh, BLS uh, non farm payroll report, Nick. And what are we looking at? Yeah, we got that number today, and it was just 245,000 new jobs. I think the expert expectations were for 410,000 new non-farm payroll. So that was a, a little bit uh, of a weak number that we got today. But to be honest, you have a lot of, uh, of closures going on and things like that. Uh, markets don't seem to be too concerned. Uh, they're holding up pretty well so far. Last month, just so everybody knows, uh, the report showed a gain of 610,000. And this month, we got the unemployment rate still remaining at 6.7% which was in line with expectations. But uh, I think the markets are focusing on this, on things opening up after, after the coronavirus vaccinations get underway. And right now uh, we have a pretty good rally on our hands. Hey, and our good friend, Dr. Frauci uh, is going to get a promotion under the Biden administration. Isn't that great? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I'm not, why, why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they got to take care of each other. We know how that works, right? So yeah. 6.7%, I don't know how accurate that number really is, what the real number is. Uh, there's a lot of people unemployed. There's a lot of empty storefronts in New York City, Nick, uh, like I've never seen before in my life. Yeah, and it's it's not just New York City. It it's it's also you know California. It's also Illinois. It's also Connecticut, Massachusetts. I mean, you're talking about a lot of blue states that have really shut down and continue to shut down. I just saw it in Staten Island, New York, where there was a a, a bar owner, a bar restaurant that had a uh, closed down, and a block over the bars and restaurants were open. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. This guy's losing business. When somebody two blocks away is open, I just don't understand these rules that they 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 put in place over there. Yeah, well, they're a bunch of uh, tyrants, and it's showing you exactly who they are and what they stand for. Anyways, uh, getting to the markets for today, what are we seeing here? Yeah, we got a good rally really across the board. The Russell two thousand is the outperformer again, up one point eight percent. I mean, just a, a great move for the Russell today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up six tenths of one percent. The S and P five hundred up about six tenths of one percent, and the Nasdaq's up six tenths of one percent. But it's that Russell two thousand, and we've been talking about that, Kerry, uh, for a while now. I said when that outperforms, that's going to lead the markets higher, and sure enough, it, it's been doing it, and it's doing it again today. Right. And that's interesting because for so much of the past year, all we've been talking about are the Fang stocks. Really, two years. And that's right. The Russell was the one indice that failed to make record highs. Yeah, the Russell peaked out in 2018. That's the remarkable part. You know, you go back all the way to August of 2018, the Russell topped out there. It was making lower highs. Now the Russell is making new all-time highs. And uh, again, when money goes into the small caps, that's a big positive overall. And um, again, that represents small cap companies in the United States. So that's a real, real bullish sign short term. Okay, so it's so it traded sideways for the better part of two years. Would you call that a consolidation, what it was doing? No, actually, it wasn't trading sideways. You, you had a big dip in 2018, and then we had a, a pretty good little rally, but it never took out the 2018 high and topped out uh, in January of this year. And then we really collapsed. I mean, just think about it. The, the Russell 2000 in January was trading as high as seven, uh, 1715 and went all the way down to a low of 966. And now here we are at 1880. So it's just been an incredible run. It's been a V V shaped move. We did a little bit of a, of a sideways move in August, really until October. And that's when I really caught a glimpse of it. I said, wow, the Russell is not falling as much as the NASDAQ or the Dow or the S&P. The Russell really is consolidating, and that's showing relative strength. And sure enough, we broke out. 
So do you think the Russell 2000 index is going to hit 2000? I think we got a shot. I think there's a legitimate shot at getting up to 2000 on the Russell 2000. <laughs> yeah, well, the powers that be love those numbers, those coincident numbers that uh, like 666, the market going up or down for a day, you know, they, they love the symbolism of it. Oh, yeah, symbolism is everywhere. Yeah, so finally, we don't have to spend much time on it because it's kind of slow, lagging today, but precious metals kind of just uh, the sideways move continues. Yeah, you do a little backing and filling. Today, we have the GLD down 59 cents. Looks like right now, as we speak, gold futures are down $1.80. Uh, silver futures are actually positive by 12 cents. And then you have gold miners via the GDX. Uh, that's down 35, uh, excuse me, that's down 15 cents today. So you're getting some backing and filling. Nothing terrible when that happens. Gold had a nice little pop this week, coincided pretty nicely with uh, with Monday's uh, eclipse and Monday's uh, lunar phase. And, um, you know, we'll see where we head now. But overall, I think that, um, you know, I think it still needs to do some more backing and filling overall before we get a big advance. Hey, I got one question for you, Nick. You know that on December 21st, that is what they're calling the Christmas star when Saturn and uh, I guess it's Jupiter get so yep, close Saturn together. Jupiter. Right. Yep, they'll, ha they'll be conjunct on that day. And it's the first time they've had this star since in 800 years. Uh, is there a particular movement you'd be expecting in the market? Not to get all astrological, but... Yeah, well, I do a lot of work with that, so I, I do have a little insight on it. Um, it coincides actually with the winter solstice as well, so it's very important. That'll happen on December 21st. You're going to have uh, Saturn, uh, which is the second largest planet, uh, conjunct Jupiter, which is the largest planet, and it's going to create uh, a big star, so to speak, or a big heavenly uh, glare in the sky. So, yeah, that, that could definitely affect markets. I would definitely be a little bit cautious around that time if we're up into that phase. Yeah, so it's interesting, though. So it's actually on the solstice, and you've you've expressed before that markets – can behave differently on the summer sol solstice or the winter solstice. That's right. You always want to watch solstices and equinoxes. Uh, very, very often, not only are they turning points into a new season for the Earth, but they are often turning points for the market as well. And that's something I, I learned a long time ago with W.D. Gann. I've been able to uh, find a lot of market turning points around then. So if we're up into that, I would definitely uh, be a little bit on the cautious side. Obviously, you want to follow the chart and uh, go off of the trend, but you always want to be aware of, uh, of equinoxes and solstices when they do occur. Fascinating. Really fascinating, Nick. And uh, we're watching it, and stuff is happening in China, too. And that solstice could be a major turning point for a lot of different cycles, a lot of different markets, and a lot of different political activities taking place around the globe. Yeah, and don't forget, you also get a lot of uh, geophysical events, too, around these big astrological events. So, you know, a lot of times I tell my my members uh, all the time, I'm like, hey, we got a big aspect coming up, and uh, it'll coincide with a volcano. It'll coincide with an earthquake. Um, I don't mean it for that to happen, but, you know, it, it sometimes coincides with that. So I think people should always be aware there could be uh, something that, that uh, a big event that does occur. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, it very often does. All right. Well, I think we will leave it at that. I think we've uh, we've hit just about everything today. And <laughs> you, know, you need to go over and take a look at InTheMoneyStocks.com or Nick's trading record and a lot of other important info about what he does, cycles, charts, all of these things that can help you make money. Go take a look at the Twitter feeds, at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Kerry Lutz, and feel free to send us your emails to kl at kerrylutz.com. Nick, we'll uh, pick up on Monday. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Kerry. You do the same. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, InTheMoneyStocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01. 